Do you sometimes need to record over 20 or 30 guitar takes until every single note lines up perfectly with the drums or with the metronome? Or did you always dream about flawlessly playing and composing complex riffs in odd meters? Or with odd note values like quintuplets, septuplets or even polyrhythms? If these questions sparked some interest, you definitely clicked on the right video today because I want to show you how you can easily move from a basic understanding of rhythm to more complex patterns without feeling completely lost or frustrated as soon as you come across things like this or like that. Trust me, it's not as hard and crazy as it looks. Let's just start with the foundation with level number one. So let's quickly talk about the rules of today's rhythm workouts. As you could hear, I was accenting the beginning of every new group with an open note followed by palm muted notes until the next group starts. This will make it much easier for you to understand the rhythms and to play perfectly in time, especially as soon as things get more complex further down the line. And since this is all about timing and rhythm, I'm just working with the low open E string for all of today's examples to keep it as simple as possible. Similar to the very popular rhythm challenges you can find all over social media right now, I also added scrolling rhythmic notation on top of the examples and the goal for you is to play them by reading the patterns. So this is not about actually learning those patterns by heart and just playing them from memory. You should always look at the notation in real time and actually read it to understand the note values that you're playing and all the groupings and small details. So now that we successfully went over today's rule book, level one is quite simple and this is the foundation that all players usually start out with. You will often need to switch between eighth notes and sixteenth notes in a practical context, especially with metal riffs. And this is already the perfect introduction to the main challenge of all of these examples. You want to play perfectly in time right after each transition. So you're not allowed to drag or rush just a little bit after each transition to a new note value. Most players are guilty of that and they speed up too much as soon as it's time for a faster note value like the 16th notes for example and then once again they slow down too much as soon as they move back to the slower note values like the eighth notes in this case so this should be your absolute biggest main focus as you're moving through all of those different levels Alright, now it gets a bit more interesting, but I think this still should be manageable for most players. Once again, you very often need to switch between triplets and straight notes in a practical context. And the same rule applies, you have to nail the timing perfectly right after each transition. And that gets even harder right now because you're switching between different time fields. So between straight notes like 8th notes and 16th notes and triplets like 8th note triplets or 16th note triplets further down the line. A general tip with all of this is that I highly recommend recording your rhythm practice sessions in Cubase or any other DAW that you you're using. That will show you immediately if you're rushing or dragging in case you can't really hear it that well yet. But please make sure not to over obsess with this. We are all human and nobody plays perfectly to the millisecond with every single note that they're playing in a song. Music definitely needs to live and breathe to a certain degree but especially in rock and metal you really need to lock in with the rhythm section or especially with those bass drum patterns that the drummers are often playing in order to get those awesome tight and super heavy riffs.
right, so this is the first real roadblock that players encounter once they get more into rhythm, quarter note triplets. You would assume that faster note values are actually much harder to play than the slower ones, but the opposite is often true. Really playing those slow quarter note triplets perfectly in time is a challenge that guitar players fail over and over again. What's the reason for this? Most people mistake the time feel right here with dotted notes. And this is what we actually want, quarter note triplets. Let's listen to it once again, back to back. So yeah, that does sound quite similar, but those are two completely different things. So to hopefully help out a bit with this very common frustrating topic, the trick and shortcut to playing perfect quarter note triplets is actually just thinking in eighth note triplets. Since one quarter note triplet takes up the place of two eighth note triplets in a measure, you can just think and count in eighth note triplets, but you're essentially always skipping a note. So it has really helped me to count and to visualize quarter note triplets like this. I'm actually thinking and counting in an eighth note grid in my mind, and I simply always skip a note when I'm playing and that way I end up with perfect quarter note triplets. So this level is all about syncopation and adding rests. Once again, you would actually think that adding rests makes things much easier since you're not playing as many notes. But once again, it turns out that this greatly complicates things because now the accents land on odd and syncopated placements within the measure. And it's quite difficult to constantly interrupt your phrases and your playing without tripping up. Once you try to play this level for the very first time, you will realize that we're all very used to playing accented notes exactly on the beat. And as soon as somebody takes it away from us and we have to work with more syncopated syncopated rhythms we sometimes tend to feel quite lost rhythmically. So working with rests and with syncopated rhythms is a great rhythm practice concept that often gets ignored and I highly recommend working on this instead of just focusing on those note transitions that we discussed with level 1 and 2. Working on this will also lead to more original rhythm and phrasing ideas in general since we're almost all guilty of playing a lot of notes all the time. So adding some rests in odd placements in the measure of your riffs and licks has the potential of really spicing them up. Before I shock you with the really difficult level 5. Make sure to download all of these awesome rhythm exercises in the form of super fun play along videos, backing tracks in different tempos and also without my guitar, guitar profiles with full instrumentation and also pdf tabs on patreon.com slash That way you finally have the perfect files and videos to play along to in the rhythm block of your daily practice routine. And in case you need a bit more help with the fundamentals, I also made a 30 day rhythm guitar course. Of course you also have access to this one on Patreon and it comes with a really cool practice plan. So make sure to check it out. Alright, so this is where things get a bit crazy, but as you can hear, it's tons of fun to work with quintuplets or septuplets or with those really fast note value changes. Notice that I was still playing in 4-4 for this last example and the drum beat was actually also quite simple. It's just a regular rock beat aside from the bass drum pattern that was mimicking the riff that I was playing. So with this example, I wanted to show you that you can come up with really crazy and complex rhythms without even using odd meters like 7-8 or 11-8. You can also do it in good old 4-4. Of course, I'd love to work on an even even crazier follow-up video that also features some odd meters like that. Just let me know if that's interesting for you in the monthly video topic votings on Patreon. So to quickly sum this one up, quintuplets and septuplets actually force you to play groups of five and seven in the time of four. So that means a group of eighth note quintuplets takes up the space of four eighth notes and a group of sixteenth note septuplets for example takes up the place of four sixteenth notes. One easy trick that makes all of this much easier is assigning words to those odd groups. So for example 
called University for quintuplets or for groups of five in general. That really helps with understanding the rhythm initially, especially if you're new to all of this. I'd love to do more on rhythm aside from all the crazy shredding that I'm usually covering on this channel. So let me know if that was interesting. And if you learned a thing or two in this video, also make sure to subscribe so that you don't miss the next one. You know it by now, still around 70% of you awesome people are not subscribed to this channel and you constantly keep missing content like this. So make sure to change that right now by clicking the little red button. You won't regret it. If you finally want to take your rhythm playing to a professional level, make sure to download all the files I made especially for you on Patreon right now. As always, the link is in the description and in the first comment down below. I will see you very again in... I will see... <laughs> what? I will see you very soon again in the next video. Have an awesome day. Bye bye.